everybody, it's Chad with Nobody Else's Auto. We are back at one of the most amazing places on earth, seeing our great friend Doug Prey at the Auburn Corps Duesenberg Factory in Broken Arrow, Oklahoma. Doug, thanks for having us again. I love coming here, you, you know you. that. You always have some of the most amazing cars that you ever see anywhere, and you have a building full of them at all times. Yeah, that's true, <laughs> that's very true. But we've got a beautiful car here that you guys just finished up mm -hmm. that's ready to go back to customer. And this thing is stunning. Yes. It's a gorgeous car. Yeah, this is, this is an 812 cord Phaeton. Um, P-H-A-E-T-O-N, an Oki accent, Phaeton. Um, it's 1936-1937 um, cord built, close to 3,000. Uh, cars, all front wheel drive. They built of this body style, they built about 600, I think a little over 600 of them. So this is one of those 600 that was built. It's the most popular styling on a cord that there is. Um, they dis distinguished an 810 from an 812. 810 was 1936, 812 was 1937. So this is a 1937 cord. Usually you can distinguish whether it's a supercharged car or not because of the outside exhaust. So you see the outside exhaust, you immediately think this is a supercharged car. They didn't offer a supercharger in 1936, but they did in 1937. But this is not a supercharged car. This is a standard 125 horsepower, 289 cubic inch engine. In fact, I'll show you the engine compartment. So flathead V8 one of the earliest V8s in America. Um, like I said, 289 cubic inches, produced about 125 horsepower. With a supercharger, they would um, produce, factory said 170 horsepower. Um, the outside exhaust were so popular in 1937 that a lot of people that had standard engines without superchargers brought them back to the factory and had the supercharged pipes added. That's what this one is. So as far as um, judging the outside exhaust added to the car doesn't add points or take away points. It's just, it, it, it's a neutral because the factory did it. But um, people love the pipes and in this Art Deco design with those exhaust pipes is considered one of the best designed cars in the world or especially in America. I think they said top 10 automotive designs in the United States was this car. 1936-1937 front wheel drive cord doesn't get any better than this. This one came in for some service work from a customer and typical we have right now in the shop we have eight different cords in the shop for service work. Because they're front wheel drive and they have what is called a pre-select shifting, the transmission is under the transmission cover right here and it's a four-speed manual transmission. Automatics didn't exist then. So this car, to shift, it's got a, has a, I call it robotics, vacuum and electronics actually shift the car for you. So if you look around here, you've seen it probably on other videos. In fact, you've done videos here of the shifting mechanism. To shift the four-speed transmission, I pre-select. So if I'm in first gear, I just simply stick it in second gear, wind it out, push in the clutch, wait, and the robot shifts it into second gear for me. And then I want to go into third. I'm still in second. I stick it into third. I'm ready for it to go into third. I push in the clutch. I wait. And again, the robotics shifts it into third and into fourth. So it's synchronized second, third, and fourth, not in first and reverse. But it's called pre-select. That's one of the neat features of cords but it's also one of the pickiest part about the cords because we get these cords in because they can't get them to shift. You don't have a shift lever to wiggle around. The electronics, the robotics has to shift it. And so they come in for us to service them. When a cord is right and it's shifting right, it is an absolutely probably the most pleasurable car I've ever driven. But when they're wrong and you can't get one to shift, it can get real frustrating. So we try to sort them all out, get all the bugs out of them, make sure they shift good for the customers. Because this is a 100 mile an hour car. Now remember the national speed limit was only 35 miles an hour in 1936. This is a 100 mile an hour car. 
from 1929 when the first front wheel drive cord was built, and we're gonna show you an L29 later on, and they were a standard shift. They went from a 1929 design and to this in a three year period, and this is Art Deco. It was considered the most complex car built in the world in 1936 and 1937. When we restore one of these cars, it takes almost 3,500 hours and there's almost 15,000 parts in a cord. They were so sophisticated in their design, but also in the, the mechanics and the electronics and everything they did. The dash is considered one of the most beautiful dashes in the world. It uh, uh, looks aircraft with all the instruments in it. Uh, it had so many firsts. If you notice, cars in 19, 30, 30s typically have running boards. This was one of the very first car with no running boards. Because it's front wheel drive, they were able to lower the car. So there's no running boards. This is supposedly the first unibody construction car in America. So it's a unibody construction like modern day cars are. It's front wheel drive like modern day cars are. It's supercharged like a lot of modern day cars are. It's got the first car with hideaway headlights. So the headlights nowadays would be electric, but now these just crank out. So if you want to see the headlights, um, it's just through this crank right here. And you can, there's one on the left, there's one on the right. So, so you had to crank, you cranked it up from the dash and open it out here. And then it brings out my headlights. And then do the same thing on the right. Well, this is, I mean, this is high tech. This was space age back then. Uh, it's called a coffin nose cord. Some people have said, well, it looks like a coffin and that's kind of always been its nickname, the pontoon style fenders. But this look right here uh, is probably one of the best looks for a 1930s car in the entire world. It doesn't get any better than this. So this car is been detailed out customer it's it's a, a driver it's not it's not a concourse quality car but close to it it will win a lot of first place trophies uh absolutely fantastic driver the value of these cars has really gone up uh a cord phaeton nice as this low price on them is probably two hundred thousand. the highest price one that i've seen sell was about five hundred and fifty thousand. Um, so there's a good range there depending on the quality, but if you figure it takes 3,500 hours to restore one, what it takes to get a car this nice. So this is just an incredible example of a 37 model 812 Cord, uh, one of 600 built, and it's getting ready to go back to its home and be driven and enjoyed. Um, and. Um, that's about it. The convertible top completely hides away. Um, I've got other cords in here with the tops up. They're beautiful with the top up, but if it's a convertible, you got to have the top down. Uh, everything about the car is just very unique to cord. The fact that it's front wheel drive, you know, there were no front wheel drive cars in America after World War II until my father brought back the Cord in 1966, and it was the first front wheel drive car in America after World War II, designed after the original one. Since we were the factory that built the original, we also built the second generation one. Then Tornado came in and copied everything we did, and the new Tornado is essentially a modern day version of the Cord. Front wheel drive, if you look at a Tornado, you'll even see the, the shape of the hood, the hubcaps, the front wheel drive, the, the universal joints. Um, it's, it's essentially a modern day version of a core. And it's the first mass produced front wheel drive core car in America was the Tornado. We actually did the first one um, and we did a scaled down version and we'll need to do a video on one of those uh, one of these days, it's 60 years since we introduced the yep, first new cord. Yep, that's for sure. And um, uh, they were a scaled down version and they used a Corvair engine move from the rear of a Corvair to the front of a Cord to make it front wheel drive. But they were a very scaled down version. This, of course, is a full size car. It's a 100 mile an hour car. You drive this on the highway, you think you're in a modern car.
And these were suicide doors too, correct? Yeah. So, suicide which is doors. amazing the way. But this is one of the first cars too, you know, to all the cars back then had hinges that showed. So you don't That's see true, the yeah, these are clean all yeah. the way around. The hinges are hidden. This is one of the first cars that instead of stepping up into the car, you step down into the car because it's front wheel drive. So it's five pa considered a five passenger car. Uh, I, can I can drive to California in this car at 70 miles an hour and never miss a lick. And you think you're in a modern car. And this car has some accessories on it too, I've noticed. Yeah, you know, they were pretty basic. Of course, the, the outside exhaust was an accessory added to it. Uh, the driving lights were a factory accessory. They say cord on top of them, and I love the beautiful yellow lens driving lights. The hood ornament, cords didn't come with a hood ornament, so you could buy an accessory, the cord wings. Oh, okay. Uh, so that's an accessory that some people like, some people don't like them. And if you notice other cords in the shop, they usually don't have that, but that was an accessory. Uh, a spotlight was an accessory, so... And the thing about a spotlight on the car, you can put your mirror there because cars didn't have outside mirrors back then. So that gives you a mirror to be able to see who's coming up behind you. Um, pretty much, you know, of course, air conditioning didn't exist. Automatics didn't exist. Uh, putting the top up is not power, of course. So you kind of have to have two people and know what you're doing to put the top up and down. Um, they did some really unique things in 36, even though this is a 37, they were trying to be ultra modern. So these are your cow vents that let air in, but on a cord on the right when you opened it up, you could fill your oil up here or fill your radiator up here. They actually got rid of that feature halfway in 36 because people were putting oil in the radiator and water in the Getting oil. Getting them mixed up. And, and so they, they stopped doing that, but that was the, one of their new modern features. The Something that people don't know, all cars had a horn button. This is supposedly the first car built that has a horn ring. So the, instead of just a button in the center, it's got a ring. This is, you know, everything ended up with horn rings, but now this was the first. So you can see the detail, the quality. This car sold in 1937 for, oh, it'd be right at $2,500. But a new Ford was $450. So this car was for people with money. Um, all their advertising was marketing to people with money that wanted to look successful, feel successful. You drove a new Cord, and you can still, that holds true today. I mean, what is more luxurious or more beautiful or well-styled than this car? Well, I mean, and even just, if you think back to that time period, we don't see the top. Right. When it's down, it's hidden. Mm -hmm. In that era, if you basically still folded it down and flopped it on the rear deck, and that's how you drove around. Yeah. yeah. This was all designed to be clean. Clean. And that's elegant. A, that's exactly right. Gordon Burek, one of the most famous automotive designers in the world, who was actually a good friend of my father's, and I knew him very well too. He died when I was about 20 years old. But Gordon Burek, the most famous car designer in the world, designed this car and was good friends of the factory and good friends of my father. And, um, uh, the talent certainly shows. He's written a book, wrote a book years ago called Rolling Sculpture with all his different designs. So he designed Auburn's, Cords, and Duesenberg's. And of course here in the factory we res do complete restorations or we service all the Auburn, Cords, and Duesenberg's around the country. Right now we have I think eight Cords in the factory uh, in either full restoration or service work. Well, this one's a beauty. It is. It's an amazing car, and, and I appreciate you taking a few minutes to share it with everybody, Doug, share some of your knowledge, and especially with this one being such an outstanding car with some of these unique features that we don't see on all of them, especially some of the, even some of the other ones we've done videos on. This has some very distinct features that we haven't seen. It's just they're stunning cars. Yeah, it, it, it's a fantastic car. It's fun to be able to share it, and we'll show you some more, the different body styles, the sedans with the topped up, um, we've got lots to look at, but this is, this is a fantastic car that we wanted to share with people before it left. Well, sounds great. She's a beauty. 
And uh, you got a lot of cool stuff going on around here. We got a lot more cool stuff to see. So let's go check out a few more things. But man, this one is, is stunning. All right, thanks. Thanks, Doug. Yep.